Good morning, TGP family. We're so glad you're here with us today. Thank you for whether you're in Phoenix or you're around the world for just worshiping with us. We get to do communion today together to, se to celebrate around the table. And so at this time, I'd just like you to, within during worship or before we do later in the service, just gather some drink and some bread that we can share together a little bit later on. Mm, great. And you know that we love you, you love us, you love others, others love you. And so I'm encouraging you in these difficult times that we continue to social distance. Do your best um, out, of, out of care. Um, wear your masks, please. Um, we'll get through this season, but as we in honor prefer one another, um, we put up with the inconvenience a bit. Uh, we want to thank you for your consistent, consistent giving. God bless you um, as the ministry continues to reach out. Um, it is school, huh? Yes. School, certain parts of the country, it's beginning. And I know this is a sensitive time for, for teachers, for parents, yes. and, and for kids. And we just want um, God's wisdom, um, depending on where you live and, 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 and stuff. So I'm, I'm gonna ask, we can pray and, and just uh, give that to the Lord. Father, we thank you that you are the God that is in control. We thank you that you are the God who cares. And so we just ask now that as um, school is getting ready to start, Father, that you would give our leaders wisdom, that you would give our administrators wisdom, that you would give our parents wisdom, Father, that, that the best decisions can be made um, that would um, bring honor and glory to you. And so, Father, we place it in your hands and we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we get to worship. You might be down in the dumps a bit today. And God understands, and we get that. But I encourage you that, that when we go to the Lord, when we're down, and we find a way to put um, our concerns or our disappointments just to one side a bit and focus on Him, um, He just has this supernatural way of meeting the need, yes. of, of lifting the spirit. And so, will you do that this morning? God bless you.
Father, you have heard the desire of our hearts. You've heard voices all over the world as we have sung this. And truly we want more because you have told us there is more. So Father, as we have sung this song, we ask that you would continue to create such a hunger and a thirst for the more that you have for us, God. So God, open up our hearts and open up our minds, open up our spirits and open up our wills, God. Open us up from even our traditions where we see and we think that you only work in one way or you have only worked in those ways in the past, God. Would you just open up our hearts for even more? So we sit, kneel, stand, hands raised, head bowed, so open to you now. In Jesus' name, amen. I worked my fingers down to the bone, but nothing I did could ever atone. But Jesus, you paid my debt. By your blood, I have redemption and salvation. Lord, you died that I might reap what you have sown. Wimps to warriors, a wimp, a weak and cowardly or unadventurous person, a warrior, a person engaged in some struggle or conflict. Boy, you know, we're called as Jesus followers to be warriors, but um, honestly, we do experience um, varying degrees of both of those definitions. Of course, challenges, everyone has challenges in life. Uh, how do we get smarter to deal with the challenges of our culture? I, that's always a question and, and um, we wanna make one person happy and when we make that one person happy, it, it upsets another. How do we do the right thing? Well. The right thing isn't always popular. How do we, how do we meet our, even our political divides? Um, it's getting wider and wider. How, how do we do that? How do we even be a person that reflects Jesus Christ? You know, I, I, I have some challenges. Every so often, eh, not regularly, regularly, but every so often, I get on Facebook and I'm, I'm watching and, and, and learning and, and listening what people say. And, and you know, I had this funny experience yesterday. I wanted so bad to respond to something that I thought was really, really extremely 
silly. And, and yet I knew that I, I couldn't um, because something was constraining me. But how easy is it for us to, to dehumanize people or people groups that if you think this, you are worth duh. And, and as Christians, it's so easy to find ourselves doing that. It's so hard living in this culture. It's just so hard and yet we want to be accepted. So, many a times we just either become ostriches, which is kind of wimpish, or don't do what we're supposed to do. That's kind of wimpish. Or do what we're not supposed to do because we just get in and we got to do it. That's kind of wimpish, too. Hold that thought. So we've been talking about wimps to warriors, and, and, and at one time we talked about the book of Genesis where we see um, God, the triune God's activity, where we see um, a picture of the Holy Spirit of God, and we see a picture of Jesus all at the beginning of creation. And, and it, it's, it's really fascinating because we have the Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now we know that in the Old Testament, uh, God the Father took preeminence and we saw pictures of Jesus and pictures of the Holy Spirit's activity. And then we saw in, in the Gospels where we saw Jesus taking the preeminence, although we have glimpses, clear glimpses of God the Father and, and, and pictures and glimpses of the Holy Spirit. And then, and then after the ascension of Jesus, after his death and resurrection, we see the activity of the Holy Spirit taking preeminence. And, and what I just want you to remember is that we see that Jesus' coming to earth was a means, not the end. And then we also see that the cross of Jesus and, and, and all of the importance and, and, and everything, the blood that was shed, again, too, was a means, but not an end. Then we see the resurrection of of Jesus, which is so important, which proves that we have life and, and that we live forever and ever with him, those who make a decision to be followers. It's a means, but it's not an, an end. I want you to think about that. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit's work in the life of the believer was God's intended purpose to bring us back into that state of, of almost perfection, like, like, like in the garden. And when we have the activity and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, daily, active, it's really, really amazing. And we become warriors. Remember, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it said, but, but you, you and, and, and me, um, will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and me, and you and me will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Today, I'm going to take a couple of moments and, and, and do a different vantage point. And the vantage point is going to be taken in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, um, starting at, I believe, at, at verse 4, and let's see how far we can, we can get. But this is the Apostle Paul 
who we read about through the book of Acts, the, the Acts of the Apostles, or, or some people say the, the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. And we see how, how Paul um, came to faith and became a warrior. And so this warrior that, that, that wrote a great portion of the New Testament has some things to say about the Holy Spirit, wisdom, and some of the things that God purposefully planned for him. Starting on verse 4, Paul is saying, my message and my preaching were not with wise or persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. What does that mean? Paul is, is really saying that he wasn't a guy that was about smooth words. He was telling the truth about who Jesus is and the purpose of us being Christ followers. Now, um, so many times as, as mere mortals, we are fascinated and, and, and drawn in with the persuasion of, of ideas and, and thought because we, we love intellect, even though I don't have it, I, or, or as much as I'd like to have, I'm, I'm still fascinated with, with higher thinking in it, and it teases the brain in it, and it challenges the minds. And yet, Paul was saying, hey, you know, I don't want to get, get caught up with that, because, you see, intellect and logic by itself can get us into trouble. You see, uh, what Paul was saying was, uh, it's really God's power by the Holy Spirit that breathes life into, um, into our lives and into our thinking and into the way that we do things. It's the evidence of God's power. That's what it's all about. You remember um, Jesus promised um, his disciples in John 14 that, that he was going to send an advocate. He was going to send a teacher that would bring us into all truth, and that's the Holy Spirit. And it's therefore what Paul is saying is it's the Holy Spirit that really persuades the mind of the listener. Paul also said that, that you know what? Um, my words that I'm hoping to give to you. This is what the apostle is saying. And this is what I'm saying too, but I'm the little p. That, that I want what I say to be activated by the Holy Spirit. And it's really for the mature, those that already have a heart to hear what God's Spirit is saying so that they can hear through God's Spirit so that transformation can happen. Proof of transformation is the way we live. You see, so many of us are, are trying to do our faith. And I'll just say that. We're just doing faith. And, and our faith as a believer sometimes depends on what day it is. It sometimes depends on the weather. Here in Phoenix, it's this week it's been 118 degrees, and, and it doesn't feel great. And so is that how my faith is going to be because it's hot and it's uncomfortable? That's, that's not where God intends us to be. The other thing that Paul is saying is, is that really um, because the Holy Spirit is the one that gives 
the knowledge and, and, and the wisdom by God's spirit, um, it's, it doesn't always make sense. Have you ever gone to Matthew chapter 5 and read the Beatitudes? I'm not going to go there today, but some of the things that Jesus was saying does not compute. It's like, like how, can, how can I be meek and yet inherit the earth? It doesn't make sense. I've got to be strong and I've got to fight and I've got to take care of me. That's how I, how I inherit my domain. But it's not like that because you see God's spirit and his wisdom that only comes through the Holy Spirit um, is sometimes counterintuitive. Let's go on to verse 7. We declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his Holy Spirit. You know, I've, I've been just really spending a lot of time just thinking about this, this, these couple of verses, and, and I think I've seen something that I've never seen before. Um, God, his truth is explained by Paul, and he says, um, the wisdom of God is a mystery. Okay, I, I get that. God's ways is higher than our ways. It makes no sense to us. Our, our, our finite minds cannot figure out how God thinks. It's just a mystery. Okay, fine. I can, I, I can go with that. The other thing is that Paul says that this mystery of God's Mind and his thinking has also been purposefully hidden. So one thing, it's a mystery. And, and, and don't you love mystery movies where you, you know, who done it? And, and you wrap your mind, you bend your mind, and you think about it from every angle, expecting that we're going to be able to solve the mystery. But Paul is saying, God, him, Self. God himself hid the mystery that no one can figure it out. You can't figure it out. I can't figure, out, figure it out. I can't figure out God's ways, his, his intentions. Because not only is it a mystery, not only is it hidden, but it's been hidden on purpose. How dare God hide himself on purpose? But the reason why this little phrase has just blown my mind this week, it says that his purposes were hidden for us, for our Glory. Whoa, wait a minute. I understand that we're, we were created for God's pleasure. I know that it's all about God's glory, that we worship him and we live for him. And yet, he is saying that because of the power of the Spirit, that he unleashed for those that wanted it, that, that there was his secret mysteries that had been hidden to everyone else but had been purposed for you and I to 
understand for our glory. Uh, let's look at glory for a minute. Glory, we can use that renowned. That's one word. You know, somebody that's just a renowned person. So you're saying that God wants us to understand who he is through the power of his spirit so that the world will see and say, whoa, John, that is renowned. Holy cow. The scripture says, yeah. Another word for, for, for glory is, is, is fame and prestige and honor and, and distinction and kudos magnificent splendor and majesty. God is saying, I hid these things so that they could be revealed to you by the Spirit for your glory. The problem that I would tend to have with that is that, is that it's really then putting me on like an ego trip. If he did that for me, and his purpose was that, 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 that our glory would be seen to the world, well, boy, that just really, you know, makes us begin to want to feel good about us. I was thinking about a, a way that maybe I can explain this. Um, late, late last year, um, I was at an event. I was able to walk into an event, a very large event in our city, and, and it just so happened that four of my children were on stage um, being a part of this worship experience, and my wife. So five of, of me was out there and they were worshiping it. And, and it was just an amazing um, morning, amazing time of worship. And I walked in and I was at the back and there was literally thousands of people there. And one of the ushers um, came to me and you know introduced himself and said, hi, how are you? Glad you're here and I'm at the back and worship is going on. And uh, is this your first time here? Why are you here? And, and, and everything. And, and I said, well, actually, um, my wife and four children are like, like, like right there on the front and they're leading, sharing in worship. And then he stopped, he says, wow, really, that is, man, they are just, yeah, yeah, you must be proud. Yes, yes, shucks, shucks, shucks. And I was feeling really good. And, and, and in a sense, in a human sense, he was saying, man, as father, as husband, wow, I, I, I raise my hat to you that they're, they're, they're lifting up God's name. And I said, oh, thank you, thank you. God bless you. And yet, as people were looking and responding to the worship that was going out there, they were receiving some glory because of God's spirit that is in them. And inadvertently, I, the Father, was also receiving the glory because I was watching my children and my wife giving their all to Jesus. I know that's a long story, but can, can you see that? What? What if God's intention for you was that you would receive glory because you look just like Jesus? The world, when they see you, they say, that person 
you look like you have been with Jesus. That is like so warrior-ish. Isn't that all we want to be? Isn't that all that God has called us to be so that we can be his witnesses at home and abroad and on the internet and on Facebook that we would represent him good and that others would say, wow, that's amazing. And you can say, thank you. And when the opportunity comes, you can say, it's because of my daddy. There is some of you that are walking with Jesus right now and you would say, Pastor Paul, I hear you. I hear you, but I just got to be me. God made me a hothead. God made me miserable until I get my third cup of coffee in the morning. So that if I am with my coworkers and they know I haven't got my third cup of coffee and I'm miserable, they'll understand because I'm only human. While it sounds good, it sounds intellectual, it sounds intelligent, it sounds logical. But remember, God's wisdom, the way that God thinks, is not always logical. And it doesn't make sense. But he's saying, as my Christ follower, I want you to access the power of my spirit that I promise to leave with you and also to be resident inside of you so that you will reflect me and resemble me in everything you do. Some of you might say, man, I'm a Christ follower, but it's not there. Okay, I, I appreciate your honesty because we're all in need of Christ and his, and his shed blood and his, and his forgiveness and his power. We're gonna pray for you. Then there's, there's some of you that have uh, just been inclined to listen and says, wow, you mean, you mean God could have provided all of this for me? You mean to say that he has given some mechanisms and provisions that, that I can live a life that is victorious, not a life that's easy, not a life that's not challenging, not a life that is going to be difficult, that's not going to be difficult but a life that is going to be so fulfilling. And I want to, I just want to let you know, you have full access to that. All you have to do is say, say, God, I, I believe as much as I know how my, my faith that, that, that Jesus came, lived, he died for my sin. He rose again and and he wants me to live forever with him and he wants to live and reside in me. Oh, Jesus, would you forgive me of my sin and give me the power to live for you? I mean, it can happen just like that. The process, the journey is a lifelong process. I'm still trying to get there, but I want to tell you that in the journey, there has been nothing more fulfilling than pursuing a life where Jesus is at the front and, and the center. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. I 
God, you know the hearts of everyone because you know, because you know. And Father, there are some people that are following you, but if never before, they have realized that many times they fall short of the bar that you've set. And, and maybe they're understanding that, that they need um, that power of your Holy Spirit. And so, Father, I ask that as they ask you to fill them with your spirit, that God, that you, in your supernatural way, would just ignite something in them. Father, help them to be different. Help them live and be prepared to die for you. Father, there are some people that are listening that says, I don't know who you are, but I need something. Jesus, as they ask you to come into their lives, as they ask you to forgive them of their sin, Father, would you um, come in? And I know you said you would, so thank you for coming into their lives today, that this will be the first day for the rest of their lives. And Father, would you give them the understanding of, of, of what this amazing person of you in the form of the Holy Spirit can do to their lives? And, and Father, even that they would say, God, give it all to me now. Would you do that for them? God, we're so grateful and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Matthew 26, Jesus took some bread and blessed it, and then he broke it in pieces and gave it to his, his disciples, saying, take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. As we share this morning, I invite you to take a piece of cracker or bread and the cup. And as we do this, we remember Jesus dying on the cross for us and the blood that he shared and his body that was bruised and broken. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time and this opportunity, it's just that we can, in a very significant way, remember you and remember what you did for us. So I ask that you would just bless this cracker or toast, what have you, that we, your people, are sharing today and the drink, whether it's coffee, it's wine, it's juice, it's water. Lord God, we remember you and remember all that you have done for us. In your precious name, we pray these things. Amen. Eat and drink.
joining us today. We hope that God spoke to you. We just wanted to remind you to give during this time. You can give through the mail, or you can drop it off at the office, or you can also give online at tgplace.net. Thanks again for being here. We hope to see you again next week.